Good morning, everyone. My name is Benjamin Bar Simon, the father of Simon the shepherd. I come from a long line of shepherds. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, they are wonderful. We're the lowliest of the low. You know, they wouldn't even allow us into the temple because shepherds are the lowest or most marginal people anywhere in Israel. Yes, yes, that's the way it works. <laughs> they don't understand it all, but that's the way. You see, we have to watch the sheep that we care for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These are sacrificial sheep there in Bethlehem. You know what Bethlehem stands for. Bat means house, Laham, bread. You know, we have there in Bethlehem, many times we think about how years ago the shepherds were there. There was the wheat of Boaz. Yes, right there in Bethlehem. And Ruth came to glean, you remember. Yes, King David, he was also a shepherd as a boy as we are. And the sheep that we watched are for sacrifice. That's why they cannot have a spot or a blemish. We have to care for them, look after them, make sure they don't get in any thorns or crevasses. We have to care for them. Sometimes we have to be rough with them. But we must care for them so they can be sacrificed. The temple, as you know, sacrifices every morning and every evening. But on Passover, Yom Kippur, yes, at that time, huh, even Josephus in his uh, antiquities, you know, said that they would, in Jerusalem alone would have a quarter of a million sheep that would be sacrificed. So it takes a lot of sheep, and we care for them, watch after them. Well, we were all with my friends. We were around the fire just wondering, when will the Messiah come, you think? I said, I don't know. It's been so long. I don't know if he will come. But we knew the prophecy of Micah. Micah chapter 5, verse 2 tells us that he would be born in Bethlehem, the house of... Uh, can you believe that? He's not going to be born in Rome where the politics take place. He'll not be born in Athens where the culture takes place. Or even in Jerusalem with the high priest. No, no. He will be born, the Bible said, in the house of bread. For he himself will be the bread of life. He will be born there, and he will rot. He will. I just wonder what will he do when he comes? Will he free us from this Roman bondage? Some people think so. I do not. I think the Messiah has a much higher view of what we need than just release from Rome. Oh, yes. I would tell my friends, oh, yes, you know, look. The Romans do their thing, but they're nothing more than a pawn and the hand of Almighty, you know who. He's in charge of all of it. Well, we were around the fire one night, eating a few things, talking about the, when the Messiah would come. And as we did, you know, Many people would discuss it back and forth. But, oh my goodness, only one day, all of a sudden, out of the blue, we couldn't believe it. But seriously, angels came, and we fell down. And we, we, we were so afraid because... We've never seen anything like this in all of its glory around us. <laughs> the first thing the angel said, fear not, 
Oh, that's easy for you to say. Yeah. But when you see these glorious beings all around, your pastor's going to preach on it. Uh, I think he told me January somewhere. He's the one that made me bring this Bible, you know. Hey, we don't need Bibles. We have scrolls. But uh, he, he wanted me to bring this. Because he wants you to know what the Bible says about what's going on. When they came, they said, Fear not, for we bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be, and here's the key word, all, 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 all people everywhere not just Jews no not just Americans either all people every nation every tongue every tribe all people everywhere we bring you glad tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this very day a Savior, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. A, a sign? A sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped. It doesn't make sense. Wrapped in what? Actually, swaddling clothes. Every time we have a sheep, we try to get our, our, all of our female sheep there that are about to have a, a little one, we always clean them with these burial wrappings called swaddling clothes. When people die, they're usually taken to the inn, but, but really they don't have room for them in the inn. They go to the stable and they prepare the body with swaddling cloths. These are ribbons of cloth about four inches wide, 15 feet or so long, and they wrap up the sheep and keep them warm once they're born. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling, swaddling, swaddling cloths that they wrap lambs in, that they wrap the dead in. And he will be lying, they said, in a manger. Our mangers are not made out of wood. They're made to last. We, they're hewed out. We have little wood where we live. So we take a big hunk of limestone and we hew it out. It looks like a little tomb. This shall be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in burial wrappings and laying in a borrowed tomb. And it looks like a manger. That's what it is, a manger, where all the animals are fed. And with that, they begin to say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. And then they faded back into glory. I looked at my friends, I said, we must go. We must go to see this great thing that they've said. So we, we left the sheep, there was one that stayed behind, but we left. Well, I, I couldn't wait. I was the youngest of all the shepherds at that time. And I, I remember j jumping over the cobblestone fences and running through the, the valleys. And we came into Bethlehem. There's just one inn in Bethlehem. It's Chimham's old inn, built clear back in the days of David. And underneath it, in just a little ways out, are the cave. They always build these inns on caves, and that's where the, when people came, their livestock would be kept there. That's where the, also they would be birthed. That's where the dead were brought. 
He's, that was the only stable I knew of in Bethlehem at that time. And I was the first to get there. And I, and it, this man walked out, I could tell it must be the father, Joseph. I told him all that the angels had said and what had happened. And he immediately invited me in as my other shepherds joined me. We couldn't help but bow because it was such a holy moment. And Mary, as you know, this virgin that the Holy Spirit had come upon, her and Joseph were to be wed, but he had not touched her. How in the world had a virgin conceived? Genesis chapter 3, the seed of the woman, she will bring that one forth. A seed of the woman, the seed belongs to the man. No, no, the seed of the woman, a virgin. And that child will grow up and one day crush the head of the serpent. Oh, yes, I remember. Oh, praise him, praise him that here in Bethlehem of Epitha, as Micah 5, 2 had said so many hundreds of years prior, even though it's small, even though it's out of the way, the backwaters, you might say, and why would he come to the most lowly people on the earth, shepherds first? Why? 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 <laughs> We couldn't even go to the temple. We were ceremonially seen as unclean. Oh, oh, pause for a moment. You've got shepherds around you, people that are there, but you don't know them. You don't ask them their name. When's the last time you asked the male person that brings your mail, whether female or male, what their name was? or what their family is like. They're just there. How about the man that brain carries off your trash? Every week you don't know his name or his family or the one that bags your groceries at the grocery store. Do you know their name? There are many shepherds around, people that know. They're marginalized people. But he came to this lowly shepherd first. Why? Because the message is for all. If a shepherd can come to a stable, anyone may come. And that includes you. <laughs> Mary and Joseph, she handed me, of all people, that child. Uh, uh, uh. I started to tremble thinking I'm holding God in flesh. I don't understand it. He is Messiah. What will his name be, I ask? And Joseph said, it will be called. He will be called Yeshua, Jesus, Savior of the world. I gave him back to his mother. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We immediately got up. You know what? A baby changes things. Amen? He changes things. As the Bible says, the light of the world. He is the light when he comes in Micah. Oh, thank God the light has come to this shepherd. I don't understand it all, but I know he is the King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Amen. Oh, yes. He may not be sitting on the throne now, but one day yes. every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I... Uh, uh, 
it's just so much. As we left, we began to tell everybody in the streets. We told them uh, uh, in the byways. We told them. And I, for the rest of my life, I told about this baby that changed me. This baby that changes all things. Oh, hallelujah. You know, your pastor's kind of a weird guy. And uh, he wanted me to bring your Bible. Like I said, we use scrolls. We, I don't know much about uh, using Bibles, but he wanted it to be here because he wanted this to be said. Do you know that you too are a gift back to God? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. When Yeshua grew up, he would come as a boy to the shepherd fields. He, Joseph and Mary, and they had other children at that time too. They would come, but the firstborn, the adopted son of Joseph, Yahshua, being the first one, he would go into the flock and he would find a lamb for sacrifice. I tried to always give it to them, but they said, no, God forbid that I should give God that which cost me nothing. So they would give me the price of a lamb. But watching Yahshua pick it out, one without spot or blemish, place it upon his shoulders as a boy, I could tell there was a hurt in his heart for that lamb. That was lamb selection day. That's a week before Passover. Oh, yes. I would look at that boy, that boy with the sheep on his shoulder. Oh, my goodness. As I noticed him, I looked into his eyes. Oh, as he carried that lamb, it was unbelievable. <laughs> but... Each year they would come and Yahshua would pick out a lamb and place it on his shoulders and Joseph would pay me. But one year I decided, no, I'll go as far as they'll let me. And you see, for one week they stay in Jerusalem or around there in Bethlehem and they would pet that sheep. They would feed that sheep from their table they would let that little lamb even drink from their cup. They would pet it. It would become part of the family. It, that was Moses' law. Now, on Passover, they would take, I would watch Yahshua with the lamb on his back go up to sacrifice that sheep. I, I walked as far as they would allow me. I, they wouldn't let me in to see the actual situation. But I watched from a distance as Yahshua gave the priest the lamb. And as they took that sharp soletto, they would cut its throat and the blood would just gush out. I watched Yahshua's eyes as he, as a boy, would look it's like he knew that he must be about his father's business. He knew. He knew what was ahead of him. Well, I remember as he grew older in stature, one day they came to the, my flock for Passover, I would always greet Joseph and Yahshua and Mary and the family. But Joseph was not with them this time. Yahshua told me that his earthly adopted father had gone into glory. And now he was the carpenter, the tecton. 
He was, and he taught his brothers, and for many years he would come, and they would still choose the flock and go to the sacrifice. Whether he was a boy or older, it didn't matter. His eyes were intent upon that sacrifice, knowing he must be about his father's business. As I said, babies change things. This baby grew up, and one day at age 30, he handed the carpenter apron to his older brother, to his younger brother, and off he went. And I was listening. There was a, a great preacher, a great preacher. His name was John the Baptist. And one day as I was there at the Jordan River listening to this great preacher, I watched when he stood up and there was Yahshua on the other bank. And, and John the Baptist bellowed out, Behold! the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. I watched him as he waded out to John. And John said, he said, baptize me, John. I said, no, no, no. John said, no, baptize me. He said, no, baptize me, for it fulfills all the scriptures. And he did. And we heard of his miracles. Many of you have said yes to Jesus, and I'm grateful. Maybe some here today that have never said an everlasting yes to him. You need him more than you need the breath of air. Yes. You see, the Bible is very clear. Yes, you're, you, when you become a Christian, you, you become a gift to God, the yes. Father. How do I know this? Well, your pastor told me to read John chapter 17. Why? It is when Yahshua was facing the cross. He prayed for his disciples, not just the 12, but everyone who would hear their message all down through time. All people, all people, remember? Let me just read what your pastor told me to read. John chapter 17. Here he says with verse 6, I have manifested your name. Listen, 17 times Yahshua uses the word give, gave, or given. You, when you become a believer in Yahshua Jesus, you are given to God. And the Bible says here, God gives you to Jesus. That's how safe you are. You're in the hands of God and the hands of Jesus. Listen, verse 6, you may have never put these together with the Christmas message. He says here, I have manifested your name. And he may, uh, from, you, you, you have given me these. Oh, God, you have given them to me. He said it was the disciples that were given to him. And Yahshua goes on and on and on. He says, I have kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them has not lost except for the son of perdition, Judas. Yes. When you give your heart to God, for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him, you don't have to perish, my friend. But you will without him. That's why babies change things. This baby grew up. And I was an older man. I watched him as he went through the streets carrying a cross. After he had been beaten, this little baby, I looked at Mary and could see her heart was crushed 
as he carried that cross. He must be about his father's business so that all can come to him. This little baby born in a manger, this little boy in the carpenter's shop, this great teacher, this one who gave his life that you might have life. And he went through the streets. No one took his life. He could call 10,000 angels. Each one of them, just one of them by themselves could have freed them. But he did not. He said, oh, Father, if this cup be as it possible, let it pass from me. But thy will be done, not mine. This was the will of God. Isaiah 53 has always baffled your pastor and me that it pleased God to bruise him for our iniquities. It pleased God to give his only begotten. And we watched as they nailed, he put out his hands, no one took his life. They nailed him there. And may I say that he was not, he's not some He's not on in between two candles at some altar. No, no. He's between two thieves because they represent you and me. Adam and Eve stole a piece of fruit, remember? Thieves. And even there, as they raised him up and dropped him in that socket, as he died there from the... We watched hour after hour after hour, and he forgave. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what to do. He even forgave the thief on the cross. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. One thief went to hell, and the other went to paradise. It's your choice. It's to all people. No matter how much sin you have, it matters not. He paid for it all. As he hung there, if you go to hell, you'll go to hell with all your sin forgiven, and you'll remember for an eternity that you could have been saved. You could have been, but you let the devil talk you out of it. Oh, friend, today, if you hear his voice, don't you harden your heart. Today, he's calling you, Yahshua, his dear sweet spirit. Oh, we watched as he hung there, And as he got close to dying, he he looked at his mother and gave her to John the Beloved. He cared for her. I thought how Mary's heart was breaking. And finally, he pulled himself upon those nails, and he cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, as all the sin of all the world came upon that righteous soul and crushed him right there. At that point, even his heavenly father had to turn away because he could not look upon sin. And then he looked to heaven once more, and he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The shofar was playing behind us. It was the ninth hour, three in the afternoon. That's when they cut the throat of the Passover lamb that represents everyone. But this lamb died at that very moment because he's the Passover lamb for all. All. We bring you glad tidings of great joy, which is to all people. But don't leave him on the cross. You know what happened. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, as you celebrate Christmas with all the presents and things and joy I hope you have. But remember, you're a gift from God to Jesus. You're a gift. Yes. Yes, indeed. And I have only one more thing to add. You're not only a gift. Well, these... These canes don't want to. These staffs won't assist me here. But here, uh, you say, well, there were some ornaments back there. Yes, I know. But ornaments have come to the world hundreds of years ago. And I, your pastor wanted me to bring this to make a point. He was in his 
study early this week, and God showed him something that he had never heard of before. I know you've seen many times in Luke chapter 2, as it was read to you today in Luke 2, uh, the Bible is very clear here in verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and what were they doing? <laughs> Hark the herald angels say. It just doesn't fit, does it? Can't help it. That's what your Bible says. They didn't sing. They say. Why is that? Well, your pastor knew that in Revelation chapter 5, that's future. It's not here yet, but in the future, it says here, uh, now when he had taken the small, the scroll, that's, and the four living creatures, that's angels, and the 24 elders, the church, that he, before <clears throat> they fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals, for you were slain, and you have redeemed us unto God. Oh, hallelujah, in your blood, out of every tribe, out of every tongue, out of every people, out of every nation, it's to all people everywhere. Oh. And your pastor preached through Job many times. He remembered Job chapter 38, verse 7. It's an unusual verse. Job had to be questioned, where were you when I have laid the foundations of the earth? And there in verse 7, it speaks of the morning stars and the sons of God, which speaks of the angels. And there they sang before the foundation of the earth was ever laid. But why do they just say now? Because you see, God created man, and man chose to sin. And a curse has been on this world since. And the holy angels are restrained. Oh, they'll sing in the glory when time is gone and the sin curse is gone. And they sang before the foundation of the world, but now they just say. They can speak, and oh, do they want to sing, but they are restrained. Well, you say, Benjamin, uh, who should sing now? Only the redeemed. The redeemed of the Lord should say so with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Oh, when you sit there and you claim to know Yahshua and say nothing. Yes. You don't sing. The angels go, what is this? They've been redeemed. They've been set free. They have a home in heaven. They belong to Jesus through God, his Father. Why don't the redeemed say so? For an eternity now, when you, and when this whole thing is over and we're with our Lord, you will be his ornaments of praise for an eternity, my friend. Amen. And from now on, every time you see those ornaments on your tree, remember, that's a picture of you, Amen. an ornament of God the Father who gave his Son so that he could give you and me after salvation to Jesus. We are his ornaments of praise. We are to let the light of Christ 
who lives within us go to the ever-reaching parts of this world. Well, praise God for that ornament. And, uh, <laughs> but praise God for the light. Amen. It doesn't fall. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. May I say in closing, babies change things. Amen. Just a moment. Yes, a baby does change everything because he was born to die. That's why the sign was, you shall find him wrapped in burial wrappings and laying in a borrowed tomb. They took his dear body off the cross and laid it in the lap of his mother. And again, she wrapped him with those swaddling clothes that were there in the stable, but this time to prepare him for death. And you know the third day, hallelujah, a baby changes everything. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just beg you today, if you don't know Christ, come to the light, the light of the world is Jesus. I don't know a better way to explain it to you except you need him more than you need another breath of air. So would you bow your head and just say, if you're not a Christian, you're not sure if you died, you go to heaven. Pray with me and call on his name. Just say, dear Father, I know I'm a sinner and I know that you sent your dear son as a baby and that he died as an adult on a cross and rose again, has ascended into glory. Today, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord, my Master, and my God. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you that you came for everyone. If you would come for a shepherd, you'd come for everybody. With heads bowed, if you prayed that prayer, God bless you. What I'm going to do now is just leave the lights down. And if you'd like to receive Christ, come to this light, this candle that's lit here. I'll, I'll be right here at the front. I can pray with you. I'd be happy to. If you want to make other decisions, you can do that. But I just beg you today, thank God that he is calling you. Thank God he's still Come to life. Seated just for a moment, please. And, uh, Brother Roger and I will be around, and our deacons and others, if you'd like to speak to someone. We're going to bring the lights up a little now. And so uh, thank you so much for coming today. I know the choir has worked hard. And, and uh, I tell you, as I was preparing this message this week, the Lord began to show me how important it is for us who are redeemed to sing. Amen? Amen. I mean, not just sing, but sing. Amen? Oh, I hope that was brought home to you today. What a wonderful Savior we have. And as you gather your family, you know, did we already tell the announcements or whatever? So all that, okay, that's all been done. Thank God that's over. So, no, 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 I'm just, I appreciate my wife always reminding me of it. But uh, one thing is that we will have a Christmas Eve service here. And I think it's at 4.30, is that right? 4.30. 4.30. And so, uh, and it will be probably less than an hour. Yes. So, and come as you are, all right? You don't need to, you know, if, if you want to dress up, fine. If you want to just come like me, you can. That'd be fine. All right? So, uh, however, but it will be worth coming to. No, no, no Wednesday night service this week. Also, on a Sunday, there will be no Bible study, but there will be a sermon. Uh, uh, I've, to do three brand new narratives has taken a lot of energy. So, I, I've asked my son to come and preach uh, on the 26th. So, um, I think, uh, I tell you what, he's a much better preacher than me. So, I, I hope that you will come if you can, it will just be that one hour uh, from 1030, and he'll be, he'll be preaching in my place. So, uh, God bless you. I hope you have more than just a Merry Christmas. I want you to have a Christmas. Amen. I want to, don't, 
you know, we always read Luke 2 before we open presents or anything. If that's not a tradition in your home, why don't you think about doing that? You know? Yeah, I mean, Jesus is the gift. And thank God, if you know the Lord, you're the gift given to God, and God has given you to Jesus. Amen? When people say, are you, you think you're God's gift to the world? So, no, no, no. No, uh, I'm God's gift to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? Let's give God praise for that. Amen? <laughs> That's worth praising for. Well, God bless you. I uh, just want to encourage you and love you. I love you all so very much. The Lord bless you. Let's uh, all stand, and this will be our closing. And oh, uh, uh, guest, if you'll put your cards in the chest of Joash and, and your offerings, whatever the Lord tells you to do, folks, that's between you and the Lord.